Circuit Scribe started as an advanced materials project at the University of Illinois Urbana in 2011, which became a Kickstarter campaign, which was funded at 793% of their $85,000 goal in December of 2013. Now, nearly a year later, I've got the Circuit Scribe Maker Kit, which was available at the $50 level. You can get it now at electroninks.com for 80 bucks. Here's what it is, components mounted to these little PCBs with round magnetic leads, plus a roller pen with special conductive ink. The ink is made with silver, so it's highly conductive, non-toxic, and very shiny. It comes with this uh, instructional booklet that has uh, diagrams with lines that you can fill in, a buzzer, a switch, a photoresistor, a two-pin connector, a nine-volt adapter, a few LEDs, a potentiometer, a blinker integrated circuit, and an NPM transistor and this little baggie with bits to go into the two-pin connector, resistors, and what looks like capacitors and an extra photoresistor. It does vary a bit from the photo on the Kickstarter. There's no op amp and there's no NAND logic gate. The 555 timer is permanently mounted to the 8-pin connector, but on the plus side, it has this little control knob. The whole set has much nicer fit and finish and these two extra by led components. The end product is a little simpler, but nicer looking and hopefully a bit more fun. The book in the box suggests ages 13 and up, but I don't see a problem with younger users than that, maybe 10 or 11. The set isn't very complicated. I would say its strong suit is making really basic circuits easy and appealing. If you can read and write, you can probably make some sense of this, which is the whole point. So let's draw some circuits. There's a workbook with several activities. It does come with a steel sheet to stick the components to. Since the ink is silver, which is non-ferromagnetic, the components don't stick to the ink they stick to the steel, so you're supposed to stick the sheet behind the page. It looks like I need a little bit more ink. The components have magnetic leads, so they even uh, can just stick to one another. So this is pretty much the simplest circuit you can make, just a battery, which has a switch, and you just have two leads here that go to our bi-LED unit. Our bi-LED unit is just two LEDs, one red in one direction, and one that's blue in the opposite direction. However, if you take the steel sheet away, the components are going to go with it. So, we have this handy stencil to mark out positions for our pieces. We can mark and connect spots for all the components, then stick them on. Even if we're not following one of the activities, we can tear them down and rebuild the same circuit again whenever we want. Let's do a simple circuit. All we have to do is follow the lines provided. We'll make a line for the negative side and another line for the positive side of the battery. Diodes only let current flow in one direction, but we've got two of them. The book introduces some standard schematic symbols. Here we've got uh, a bit of a glossary of them on the back of the steel sheet. As the book explains, current flows from the positive cathode of the battery to the negative anode. But of course, the current is actually produced by electrons flowing in the opposite direction. Supposedly, Benjamin Franklin is responsible for this. He thought of electricity as a fluid, but for reasons no one seems to know, he labeled too much of it as negative and too little as positive. I'm going to put a little bit more ink into the lines here. The red LED lights up in one direction and the blue LED lights up in the opposite direction. Here we'll do a slightly more interesting circuit that's a touch sensor. You have to be pretty careful to get the lines to connect completely. The positive terminal of the battery is connected to one side of the LED. The other side of the LED will be connected to the collector of our transistor unit. The emitter of the transistor will be connected to the negative pole of our battery. And the base of the transistor will have a disconnected lead which comes very close to the current source from the positive terminal of the battery. So then we'll put our battery in place and switch it on. Our LED and our NPN transistor, being careful to orient that correctly. And then this should become a touch sensor which allows a small amount of current to go through my hand and then into the base of the transistor. And when a small amount of current is allowed to pass into the base, 
a larger amount is allowed to go from the collector to the emitter, which causes a circuit which goes through our LED and lights it. So the small amount of electricity passing through my hand is amplified by the transistor. The page is telling you to make sure that the ink is dry first because they recommend not putting this ink onto your skin, but it's not really dangerous, so we'll have to try that later. Of course, the pieces are interchangeable, so we can replace our LED with a buzzer and perform the same experiment. Or we could replace current flowing through our hand with the switch included and switch that on and off. Here's another experiment to control the RGB LED unit. I think it's flowing a little bit more smoothly now. The RGB LED unit is just three LEDs in parallel, one red, one blue, one green. Make sure you put the battery on in the correct direction for this. So the dots of ink are arranged in such a way that at different positions, different LEDs will be connected. All right, now we're at the last half of the book, which is all blank pages. Let's try coming up with something from scratch. We can throw in a buzzer to replace the LED. It gets annoying pretty fast. Some of the components have LEDs on the boards themselves. For instance, on the power unit, we have a blue LED to indicate power is on. There's a red LED to indicate that there's a short in the circuit. So if we shine a bright light on the photo sensor, it turns the red and blue flashing into white and aqua. Circuit Scribe is available at electroinks.com. As you can see, it's pretty neat. I had a lot of fun playing with it. I think it would make a great gift for any young tinkerers, you know. Its possibilities are a bit limited for the price, but it makes up for that by just being cool. If you want to see me put more electronics thingies together, check out my PC build video. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more fun stuff like this. If you've got suggestions or questions, leave a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.